this video, we'll look at investment and measurement of L&D. Today I'm joined by David Rumbins and Rhiannon Yetzinger from Deloitte, and we're really going to pull this apart. Investment and measurement. So what are businesses saying about their investment and, and, and the measurement of learning outcomes from their L&D investment? Our research on this was that over half of businesses, so 51%, said they want better evidence on the benefits of L&D for organisational performance. And I think both of those two things combined, you know, there's de certainly an appetite for better measurement um, and there's certainly more scope for businesses to be doing more of it moving forward. What are the main measurement tools that businesses are using to measure L&D? So the majority of businesses who do measure L&D do so through employee satisfaction surveys. Um, there are far fewer businesses who actually use quantitative measures to understand the return on investment of L&D. So when I say quantitative measures, I'm thinking about things like, you know, how is training correlated with um, a firm's financial performance um, and, and employee productivity. So those other sort of um, measures to understand how effective training has been. Another interesting point and um, um, we did talk about this in an earlier session, is that businesses with more advanced learning maturity are actually far more likely to use these quantitative metrics to understand the return on investment, yep. whereas um, laggard learning organisations were far more likely to not measure it at all, or when they do measure it, to just be using employee satisfaction surveys or other qualitative measures um, to understand the effectiveness of training. And globally, we know that organisations perform better when they invest in L&D. Is that ringing true for Australian businesses? Investment in L&D per employee can be associated with increased business revenue for a number of different reasons. It could help employees be more productive and able to do their job more effectively. It could also help um, employees innovate and potentially help the business to provide new services or um, you know, produce different goods. But it's also important to note that more successful businesses are also more likely to invest more in L&D, so it actually runs both ways. Yep. No, that's good. So it is more than just the bottom line. There's more benefits of investing in L&D for an organisation, isn't there? Yes, yeah, certainly. And we know this from previous research that's been done. But with our own research, we also looked at um, the difference in attrition rates between laggard and advanced learning organisations. And what we found was that laggard learning organisations had an attrition rate that was 1.8 times as high, so almost yeah. twice as high as advanced learning organisations. And in the current context of skill shortages, I think that's a really important finding that L&D can actually help support employee retention. Mm -hmm.